going on vapers? Nick here for Spin Fuels Daily Vape TV. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Council of Vapor Stratos Replaceable Coil Tank Atomizer. This will be my final in the Council of Vapor series of videos that I've been doing the past few weeks. Uh, I want to give a huge shout out to EV Liquids for sending me these devices. Uh, big thanks to you guys, really appreciate it. Uh, make sure you go check them out because they are now going to be the official resellers of the Council of Vapors mods, um, including the Stratos, uh, the Aris, and the Kindred mod. Now on to this device. Here we have the replaceable coil uh, tank atomizer, and as you can see, this thing is a beauty, and it's also a beast. So uh, let's just take a quick drag off it, and we'll get into it. So let's go over some of the specs of this device. Here I have the polished stainless steel version. They also have a 24 karat gold coated uh, brass version. Uh, this is a 23 millimeter in diameter uh, device and it's also 76.5 millimeters tall, including the drip tip. The 510 threading on it is really smooth. Uh, threads onto all my devices really nice. Uh, it also comes with two different coil heads uh, depending on which ones you choose. I chose the 0.8 ohm and 1.2 ohm coils. There's also the 2.0 ohm and 2.4 ohm version of the uh, coils which are um, proprietary. It has this really nice airflow control ring. Again, very similar to the Nautilus. You just turn it and it has a little uh, nub where it just locks it right into place. So once you find the airflow that you enjoy, you can just set it and you don't have to worry about it anymore. It's not going to move around on you or anything. Uh, obviously the tank is all glass and so is the drip tip. And the O-rings on the drip tip are really nice. I can hold up this massive uh, 722 mod just by the drip tip and it's holding up just fine, as you can see here. And uh, this thing is a beast. I mean, it's 23 millimeters wide, which is larger than any other uh, tank atomizer that I own. It's also taller than most of the tank atomizers that I own. So this being a 23 millimeter device, it's going to look a little bit weird on a smaller mod, such as like a mechanical mod that's 22 millimeters in diameter. Uh, but on this thing, I feel like it really uh, looks nice, as you can see here. All right, so that's the specs on the Stratos replaceable coil tank atomizer. Uh, let's go down to the close-up view and get a better look at it. Alright, so as you can see here, we have the Stratos in its original packaging, which has that really nice uh, Council of Vapor flair to it, with the wood veneer kind of look, with the gold logo. It looks really beautiful. Um, and with the other atomizer, the Aris that I got, just like that one, it has a tamper-proof seal. And on the bottom here, as you can see, it has listed the types of coils that they supplied with it. Now with my Stratos, I got the 0.8 ohm and 1.2 ohm coils. Uh, you can also get a 2.0 and 2.4 ohm coil combo uh, if you choose. And as you can see here, it also lists the material, stainless steel or brass. Uh, so let's open it up and see how it looks inside. So just like the Aeris Dripper, it comes with a quick start guide, which is really handy. Uh, this being a very unique atomizer, might be a little bit strange for some people uh, who have never used something like this before. But as you can see here, it lists everything you have to do to uh, get this thing going. Alright, so as you can see here, the packaging is really nice. Everything stays in there nice and neat. It's not going to shift around on you. Uh, it has the other coil that comes with it here. Um, I already have one installed in there. So here's our first look at the Stratos replaceable coil tank atomizer. Uh, it has this nice cooling fin look at the top here with a glass tank and glass drip tip. Uh, the O-rings on the drip tip are really snug. It takes quite a bit of effort to uh, get that out of there. And as you can see on this one, it has two O-rings. Also in the package, it comes with a spare atomizer. This one is the 1.2 ohm. All right, so I have it all broken apart here, as you can see. And we're going to go over all the little pieces and at what they do, what I like about them. And uh, we'll, then we'll fill it up and put it back on our mod. 
So here we have the glass drip tip section. Uh, it's really sturdy, really bulky. The glass on it's really thick, so it can definitely stand up to some abuse. I have heard a few cases where the glass section has fallen out of the metal base, but I know that Council of Vapors is rectifying the situation as of right now, so that's good, good for them. Here are the O-rings, nice and chunky, definitely very grippy. Here is the glass tank portion as well as the chimney and the upper portion of the 510 drip tip deck. As you can see here, uh, fairly wide bore, decent for a mod of this type, uh, really high polish. This thing is definitely going to attract some fingerprints, but uh, nothing you can do about that. And here we have the glass tank. Again, very thick glass on there, uh, definitely going to stand up to some abuse. The chimney is really nice because it threads onto the atomizer itself, so it's definitely not going to come apart by accident or anything like that. It is actually a little bit difficult for me to get the tank off of, but uh, maybe I'd screwed it on a little bit too tight. As far as I know, this glass tank is not removable from the top section here. Uh, I've tried twisting it, and it's definitely not coming out. So, uh, it's not a big deal. I mean, it's easy enough to clean. You just stick a Q-tip in there and run some water through it and it'll be nice and clean. Here we have one of the atomizers for the Stratos. This is the 0.8 ohm coil. Um, as you can see here, it has upper and lower threads, meaning it will thread into the chimney as well as onto the base. And I don't know if you can see in there too well. Uh, there's not a lot of light, but uh, it does have a bit of ceramic in there and wicking material. And the coils themselves are fairly loose so it's definitely not a really tight micro coil but it definitely serves its purpose. I've tried it at a few different wattages and I find that 15 watts really maxes out the uh, 0.8 ohm coil. And here's the base section which goes onto a pin in the lower portion of the deck which I'll show you in a moment. As you can see here, we have the lower section of the atomizer. It has this really huge rubber gasket, which creates a really nice tight seal on the tank section. And if you can see in the bottom there, that's a small pin that connects to the atomizer itself. Here's the Stratos logo. Very, very subtle markings on this thing. Here you can see the air hole, as well as the airflow control ring system. Uh, you have four different air hole sizes to choose from. I'm not exactly sure what the sizes are, but I can tell you it's very similar to the Nautilus tank. And as you can see here, we have the Council of Vapor logo. Uh, we have our serial number right here. Very subtle engravings. This thing definitely looks awesome though. Alright, so now that we took a good up close look at it, let's just install the coil back into this thing and we're going to fill it up. So today I'm going to be vaping this with Eve E-Liquids flavor mango culotta. So after you have the atomizer installed back into your base, all you're going to do is flip it upside down and fill it up with e-liquid. I usually like to leave a little bit of room but this thing holds about four mils of e-liquid. It's very easy to fill as well. Alright, so now that we have it all filled, I'm just going to turn the bottom portion upside down and thread it on. Now that I've selected my air hole size, I'm going to put it back on my mod here. Alright, so before I go back to the main screen, I'm just going to take this back off our mod and I'm going to compare it to a few different other atomizers that I have that are similar in size. I just want to show you a good, really good size comparison. So as you can see here, I have a few of my atomizers lined up for you for a good size comparison. I have the Russian 91%, Fogger V4, 
Here's the Stratos in the middle with a Nautilus tank and a David tank. As far as the size dif difference between these atomizers, the Stratos definitely is the widest from what I've seen at 23 millimeters. Uh, the Russian and the Fogger V4 are both 22 millimeters. Uh, I think the Nautilus is actually about 22, uh, and the David is the smallest one. That's about uh, 20 or 21 millimeter atomizer. So, uh, as far as the size, I mean, the Stratos is big but it also holds a lot of e-liquid, uh, very comparable to the Nautilus tank. Um, the, obviously these two here are rebuildable atomizers, so not a lot of comparison there compared to a replaceable coil atomizer. If I had to say one was the closest, I would say the Nautilus, just because the size and function of it is definitely very, very close. So let's go back to the main screen, have a quick vape, go over some pros and cons, and then I'll tell you my final verdict. All right, so we have our Stratos back on our 722 mod. Let's have a vape. So one thing I did notice about this device is when I put it on my mod and I fired it up, uh, I had the 0.8 ohm coil in there and it instantly jumped up to 0.9 and now it's reading at about 1.1 ohms. I think this has to do with the fact that the coils on these atomizers are a little bit loose, uh, not so much on the high resistance coils. You really do get fantastic flavor out of this device. Uh, with such a large air hole and me taking lung inhales rather than doing mouth to lung, I didn't think I was gonna get as good of a flavor as I do out of it, but you really do get awesome flavor out of it. Uh, this flavor itself, the Mango Culotta by Eve Liquids, is I'm really enjoying it right now. Uh, let's have another vape. So right now I'm going to blow two different clouds and I'm going to be using the 0.8 ohm coil first and then second I'm going to be using the 1.2 ohm. So now we're going to do a quick comparison between this device and the Nautilus tank. So I'm going to do a quick cloud out of this one and then swap over the, to the Nautilus and then I'll let you know what I think. So again, I am vaping at 15 watts uh, with both devices, and I just wanted to gauge the comparison between the airflow control itself. I'm also using the widest air hole option on both devices, and in my opinion, the Stratos definitely has a more of a loose draw, which personally I really enjoy. Uh, the Nautilus is even wide open, is still really, really tight, and uh, that's definitely something that uh, they got right, so big points for them uh, for that. Now let's get to some pros and cons. So my first pro is definitely going to be the look of this device. It is gorgeous. I mean, everything from the machining all the way down to the glass drip tip and the tank. This thing is really well made and I love the look of it. So my second pro is going to be the price. This thing goes for around $40 online and that's definitely comparable to any other replaceable coil tank atomizers out there. And for something that is of this quality and has an individual serial number on every single one, I think that's a great deal. My third pro is going to be the coil options. I like the fact that they give you the option of a sub-ohm coil as well as a higher ohm coil. For someone that's using a mech mod and a regulated device and maybe you want to switch over from, you know, at work you're using a regulated device and at home you want to use your mech mod or whatever, you can just go ahead and do that and you can just swap out those atomizer heads and you're good to go. Obviously I'm going to have to mention the airflow. I'm loving the airflow on this thing. For a lung inhaler like myself, um, to have the option of a really loose draw is a great thing in my book. So the fourth pro on my list is going to be the fact that the glass tank is actually slightly recessed. I really like that fact because you can just put this thing down on the table and not have to worry about scratching the glass or breaking the glass, anything like that. Even on a smaller device, you really don't have to worry about it. And my final pro is going to be the O-rings on the drip tip. I love the O-rings because I know I'm never going to lose a drip tip, it's never going to come out of there, it's not, not going to move around on me, doesn't wobble, doesn't wiggle, nothing. It's perfect. I love the drip tip on this thing. Alright, so now the cons. Uh, first con on my list is the fact that it is big. It's not only big, it's also heavy. Uh, in my opinion, it doesn't really pair up well with a standard mech mod. I've tried it on my vanilla mod and it just looks ridiculous. It really just dwarfs it. Uh, and it makes it overall height of any mod that much bigger. I mean this mod here I w probably wouldn't take this thing out in public too much just be based on the sheer size of it. I mean this thing is massive 
So that's going to be my first con. Uh, second one is the airflow control ring. It is a bit loose and does rattle around a little bit on you. I don't know if you can hear this. Hopefully, hopefully it'll come out in the mic. So wiggling it back and forth, wiggling it up and down causes a slight um, rattling sound. And not only that, when you close off the airflow and try to take a dry puff through it, uh, you get a little bit of air through there, which means it's not going to have the great suction uh, like the Nautilus tank does. So when I prime my tanks, all I do is I close off the airflow control and take a primer puff out of the drip tip without holding the fire button down. And that usually gets the juice flowing back into my tank. And when I do that with this one, I do get a little bit of a wheezing sound or a whistle. So I'm going to see if I can show you here. So what that means to me is there's going to be air going through the airflow control ring section. Even when you have your uh, airflow control set to the smallest setting, it might end up uh, being a slight bit looser for you. And that's definitely going to be marked as a con. So my third con is going to be the upper section here where you see these cooling fin looking things. And these things, if they're trying to be cooling fins, they're definitely pointless. There's really no reason to have them there. On something like the Vulcan Atomizer, I can see why they have cooling fins because you don't want your mod overheating or your drip tip overheating. And with a device like this, you're really not going to get too hot. So these things are absolutely pointless in my book. And I would have liked to see a slightly larger e-liquid capacity. I mean, if you get rid of those top fins there, you could have increased the capacity to almost about 6 milliliters. And uh, for me, that would be more convenient than having the device look nice. My fourth con is going to be another aesthetic con. Uh, this device does not look good on the Kindred mod, which is also made by Council of Vapor. And if they're going for something like a flush look or anything like that, uh, they really didn't quite match it up perfectly. The Kindred mod has a slight brushed look, as you saw in the full review. And I did pop this thing on there in that video and it doesn't look quite right. I think if this thing had a brush finish to it, it would look a lot nicer. Now, regardless of the diameter of this device, uh, on the Kindred mod, it's not going to look as pretty as something like the Aeris Dripper. So my final con tonight is going to be the overall atomizer design. Uh, it is a proprietary atomizer, so you have to get the specific coils. You can't just pop an, a Nautilus coil in there. It's got to be the special con Council of Vapor ones. Uh, and in my opinion, I think they could have done a better job designing the bottom section where they have a small spring where that makes the connection between the atomizer and the base. Personally, I don't like having a spring there because I believe that that's one of the factors of the uh, resistance of the coils jumping around on me a little bit. Uh, I've been sitting here vaping on this thing and it's gone from 1.5 to 1.6 and it's supposed to be a 1.2 ohm coil. Uh, same thing with the 0.8 ohm coil that I mentioned earlier. Uh, that thing jumped up from 0.8 all the way up to 1.1 ohms and it's hovering somewhere around there and it does occasionally give me slightly different resistances so I believe that the tightness of the coils themselves and the overall design of the atomizer can really cause a fluctuation in resistance. So the overall atomizer design could be a little bit nicer. Same thing with the tightness of the coils. Hopefully they uh, correct these issues in future versions of this thing. Uh, with all that being said, would I buy this device if I did not receive it for free for the purpose of review? My answer would be yes. And the reason I say yes is because of the airflow and the price. For an authentic device such as this with a serial number, you can't go wrong with 40 bucks. And especially with the airflow, as advertised, the airflow is better than the Nautilus. And I think that's a real, the real reason I keep using this thing. Other than the airflow though, uh, you know, there's nothing really too fancy about this. I mean, it looks great, but the overall design is pretty much like a Nautilus. I mean, you have your coil, replaceable coil heads, you have your chimney, you have your glass tank, you have your top cap and your drip tip. It's pretty much the same thing. Overall, I'm going to say it's a, a really good bargain for all you people looking to get something with a fairly decent e-liquid capacity, this one's going to be for you. Alright, so there's my review on the Stratos Replaceable Coil Tank Atomizer. Hope you enjoyed the video guys. Don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Check out www.spinfuel.com for lots more of my videos as well as Smoke and Joey and the Vapor Trail channel. Stay tuned for my next video, and as always, vape on!